never actually watch other people's talk shows, so this is a unique experience for me. I have tweeted that I'm doing this, but apparently Twitter doesn't really work anymore. So this may not do anything. Wasn't Euphoria your podcast initially? Euphoria wasn't my podcast name initially, um, but my Twitter branding, which was most of my branding at the time, in fairness, was entirely about Euphoria, right? The fucking Euphoria meme came, was made by a fan of mine originally because I kept spamming Euphoria everywhere since season four? Season four, I think. You can find it on my Twitter from season four onwards. Like, I, I just spam that shit. I was just like a core part. Like, I was the only person covering Europe for like ages, by the way. Anyway. Hello and welcome to episode 16 of Euphoria. Fall. Okay, I had no idea this thing's been going on so long. Like, when they say... S how how much is a season, by the way? Is a season one split? Because they obviously haven't been doing it for 11 years, right? They started doing it in, like, season eight? Was a split. Okay. Following the second week of the LEC Summer Split 2023, I'm Draco, joined by Cadrill. And our special... Tell me if the volume levels are fine, by the way. Special guest of the day, none other than Trimby. Welcome, Trimby. Hello. No, he's not on Koi with that with that, that purple, purple lavender beautiful jersey. Uh, it does say jersey. fanatic on it. I thought it was Koi, but it's not. I did not mean to do that. But <laughs> that was the only I thing. I... Subtle. Do you want me to? Can I two times it? Are you guys fine if I two times it? I would. If I was to watch this normally, I'd two times it. To be clear, like this. One of the only things I had that are quite clean today, so yeah, I don't I have to do it on my field. Yeah. I know there's probably no bad blood, but in my head, it's that guy doing this on the grave when you show up in the purple fanatic jersey, you know, who's showing his in like, just be like, oh my god, we'll get to that later, because there's a lot of things going on in Yeah. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, SoundCloud, wherever you're listening, you can also be listening somewhere else if you want to. Um, yeah, Trimby, I think first order of business, there's a lot to be excited about for you right now. Um, yeah. The thing I'm most excited about is this dancing thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got moves, you're coming out. When, when did this start? When did this, like, have you always wanted to dance? What's the process here? How did you get into dancing? Uh, I actually always wanted to take up, like, street dance or, like, just now I do hip hop. Yeah. But before, when I was, like, I mean, I started early, like, dancing because my mom would always, like, kind of force me to, like, go to different activities. dance classes. Yeah, activities yeah. from school. Yeah. And all. Yeah. One of those I don't have to react to this bit, do I? <laughs> I, don't, I don't have to react to this bit, right? Go after school, you know, like, if you don't have anything to do, you exactly. do drugs and crime, please, because you have to have yeah. a school activity. It's more like, you're inside all day playing video games. We the dance class lasts for four minutes! Okay. We're switching. Yeah. Uh, is there anything you guys do? You as a team, you talk about yourself doing dance, that's awesome. Yeah. But you have isn't just like League of Legends, you know, yeah. it's good to have those things. But when we had <laughs> the previous event walking on, uh, they did like an escape room or something together. Are you guys doing like any big team building? Activities? Oh, yeah, we already had a couple of escape rooms. I, mean, nice. I was never a fan of those, but it always depends. Like last time we were, it was really good. Yeah. I like the escape room actually, it was a lot of fun. I mean, they just like a lot. Sometimes we go with too many people, right? We go like team manager joins and all the players, and we do it at seven, eight. It's, it's messy, it's really good. Yeah, everyone starts cooking, and there's so much stuff cooked up, you know, to like absolute limits. It's not really good, but yeah, <laughs> it's this. I think we have, uh, I mean, we play board games like actually on daily pretty yeah. much nowadays, and it's really nice. It's like nice to just play something like just do something different. We play like different games, we try to play like find games that are like cooperative, and we like play together as like a like big, bigger unit okay the team building bits almost done okay and then we talk so like, right, like analysts and everyone like yeah. how oh. the fuck do you watch videos like i don't i don't normally watch videos like this so it's new for me all right to join it's like eight nine people and it's not easy to find like an actual nice game but you know everyone will enjoy yep. you know like people actually will not get bored at some point and it's not that long so there's some things it's getting a bit boring you know like what sure if you do it on daily but um, for now we're not bored of it yet yeah. it seems like and we're doing it's, it's nice it's nice and you know it seems like teams come together very quickly obviously you guys have you know a fantastic record so far and it's been a good split but before we kind of talk about this split this season and this team uh, shifting attention back to kind of the process that brought you here because this yeah. was this was as a, as a spectator uh, and i don't have all the details and you don't have to share all the details yeah. i don't know what all the details are but this was like this was a very wacky off season now the noah pickup it's like cool okay exciting i can see why obviously struggled in the previous split but then they just got you yeah. out of nowhere like, mainstay what? like former champion with uh with koi to be clear, I think if all they did was change Reckless for Noah, they were trolling. And I do think anyone who thought Reckless was the problem with that bolt lane is literally delusional. And there's almost a one-to-one -one with people who thought that and people who still think Bo is good, so... With Odo, who also obviously went over to Excel, it's just like, oh, we were super caught off guard. Especially in trade. Especially in trade. Yeah. Um, so how, how did this go down from, from your perspective? Was this something that you were initially like caught off guard by? Did you know this was coming? Um, what, was, what was the process like for you? Well, I mean, the thing is, after Winter Split, I already had like thoughts in my mind that, you know, like if we're going to do the same like To this, be yeah. clear, like, I'm not hard flaming Advian, but they went through Rux into Advian, and both those decisions were quite in. It would be good for me to change. Mm -hmm. They were just thoughts like that, you know? Yeah. But yeah. The... See you out too. Thanks for the follow. More and more happened. 
It was it was really strange because everything. The going... But I still remember like first hearing about Trimby to Advian, Trimby for Advian behind the scenes, meaning that was weird, and then like seeing it actually happen. Because, like, I think I first saw it actually happening on stream, and it was, like, such a what-the-fuck moment. Like, how is this worth in any way? Like, Trimby had that. It, I, it's still, I still didn't get it. Going around, right? Our Springs people just disastrous. I'll Rux say. was a huge problem. Rux was a massive problem. Regardless, I mean, we did, like, what? We went fifth, or... Uh, we went actually fifth. I don't... You know, it's not that bad, but... And the guy, like, had zero IQ on how to handle that as well. Because I remember he went on the show... On, on the Fanatic, like, mini documentaries that they do, right? And and Rux was saying he has an issue right now playing Enchanters, he's trying to practice them more and more, but they're not getting very good practice on it, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then off of that, people start bringing up, okay, so the reason that they're not doing Enchanters on bot when Enchanters are so good is because Rux can't play them, Right? And then Lux starts saying, why are people accusing me of this, blah, 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 blah. And like, what? You are the one that said it, dude. And he like, I don't know, he just thought he could get away with that bullshit. Then he got fired, so. When you have, I personally have like a lot of, you know, like feelings towards like just winning, you know, I wanted to win. I wanted to just be able to compete at the high, like on just the high. Like, like if you guys remember the state of Lucian Nami at that point, the fact that these guys couldn't even operate Nami was so mental, no? And then people were making it a reckless champel issue when he literally can't play a lot of these champs. Like, there's a point where they should have just gone, like, full Kaiser and stuff. And that's true. But blaming Reckless for that and flaming Reckless pool is so... Like, I don't know. But that was also the same split where people were flaming Neon. So, I don't know. Higher stage and just win it all. And it didn't work for us. It just didn't work out at all. And... Like, yeah, we need yeah, and they were picking Rakan, and Rux himself says in the documentary that they that he had an enchanter issue, and then people go in on that, and he goes, "Why are you going in on that?" It's like, dude, because you said it. Like, no one made up this whole idea. You said he it. A change. I knew that there would be a change, but I mean, personally, I didn't expect it would be me. Like, I just didn't. But yeah. on the other hand, I knew I was the guy who just I felt bad with how things were, and I was. I mean, Reckless went through enough supports that season that he decided he may as well be the support. You know, it's like if it's this easy to get a support job, fuck it, I'm doing it. About it a lot, like yeah. I would always talk that something needs to change. You know, like something needs to happen because I felt like everyone, you know, felt bad. But at the end of the day, I felt like I was the only one who actually like was so uh, open about it. You know, yeah. I would all the time just you know like say that think yeah, something we need to do something yeah, right. Yeah, then yeah. we tried our best to do a lot of different stuff. We tried to like fix things. I also had my own issues, you know, which didn't help too much at the time. Yeah. And nowadays, I would say that. Yeah, it helped. Like this whole experience helped me a lot, especially mm. Spring Split, because that's the time I actually got to understand a lot about myself. That yeah. helped me a lot. Is there anything you can share from that? Like, what is yeah. it? Is it? Do you did you realize more of what you need in a team environment, or more of like what role you want to play? Like, what did you actually yeah. learn through this? Through this I mean, I have like a lot of like actual like yeah like these all things like all of the things I learned. Mm. There's a lot of them because when I heard that I might be changed, yep. and like after after our split, like at first I thought maybe I shouldn't talk with people about it. Maybe I should just keep it to myself. Because I was still in Berlin. Yeah, when I heard that I might be changed, mm. but I was like, no, nah, I don't know. It's not me. You know, I had to talk with everyone about yeah. it. And uh, through all of the talks I had with everyone, I had to, like you know all the coaches, GM, like all the players. I realized a lot. You know what how they felt. I mean, it's kind of sad that we had such talks only after an actual split uh, yeah. before but it's also because of me because uh you know like i could play put blame on anyone like sure because you know like i could be like this uh, but i just wanted to make sure that you know i'm fine with it and i learn what happened you know and after all the talks i learned so much it's actually like i had like one two weeks in off season when like i was just you know there sitting in front of my pc at my home and i was just figuring out all of the stuff because i had so much stuff to think from yeah because um, i realized how i changed throughout this year compared to last year's i felt like before when i was in row i was so uh I would say I was so helpful to everyone, and I never cared about myself. Yeah. And this year, I felt like that energy just went, like, was gone. You know, like yeah. I, I just couldn't do it anymore, like this. Where like I was, I felt like I was doing a lot for others, and I was like, just making up for others, you know. And I never talked about it. Like I never really, I never really tried to help others. I was just, I was helping others by just doing more. But it didn't, re it didn't really help them, right? Because I was like doing something for them while they didn't really learn much, you know. And I never spoke about yeah. it. You, you're like overcompensating yes, for others, yes, being yes. selfish. And I, it's not, I mean, it's not like egoing something, because but I had a lot on my shoulders. I felt like yeah. years. Well, and I can see how, and I think sometimes people. Need okay, so I guess the implication there is that. He basically withdrew from the team environment a bit um, and decided that, like, he treated it like as a bit of a lost cause, is what it more or less sounds like. Like, it sounds like the effect he didn't realize he was having is everyone else figured Trimby's given up trying to work things out with the team, whereas Trimby in his head was just trying to take a different approach. But as a result, it just looks like he's withdrawn from the team environment in general, and they'd rather have someone who helps the whole five man out from a team building aspect. So that's what it sounds like. And it's and when he says he learns things, he probably just didn't realize that when he withdrew, 
that everybody else viewed that as an issue that prevents the team as a whole growing and people just don't want to be in an environment with one person who's withdrawn you know that's what it sounds like the irony is this is basically what the reckless allegations actually should have been right when you're a person who gives a lot it sounds like you were that person maybe you are that person again um if you're not getting that back from people you can like you can yeah yourself that's really exactly what happened like this year i felt like my energy like i mean i talked to a psychologist though and she told me that at some point you, you can't make up the energy you know that you use and like she always asked me like how much i put and sometimes i'll, ask, I'll say like 110 percent when you know and then she said yeah now you have to like kind of recover it you know and yeah. that's kind of what i felt like i was trying to recover it i couldn't put as much as i normally do and i was very uh, and i was asked, like i was trying to ask others to like get that energy back but i was not really open about it you know i was yeah. i was expecting people to give that energy back but it, what is that ring here He's wearing it's not it's not something i can expect i have to be really open mm. about it and i really wasn't so that's yeah. like big on me well yeah in my experience it's really hard because i think that there are two uh, there are two kinds of very just there's a lot of, kind of people in this context there are two kinds of people that meet all the time there are people who are super considerate and who similar to you put things out there do things for people very selflessly and want to live in a world where other people do the same and there are people like me and i think mark you're kind of like this too where we're like if you ask me to do something for you i will jump over like i'm, I'm that kind of friend i will show up for you thick or thin if you don't i'm assuming you're fine yeah. and i don't need to do anything for you and like those two personality types like mm. are always a conflict so yeah. i totally get you I mean, yeah. we have the same we've had the same thing on caster teams in the past it's, i've heard of this on teams as well that's like that's a really tricky thing to deal with and the problem is, is that even though you're the person that's doing so much it still feels kind of like the burden is on you to also be the person that then communicates yeah. to them that you need this thing so it's like you're doing double duty there which yeah. is i felt a lot of it and between winter and spring like freddie told me one thing that's like so i'll pause when he when he shows it again so true. and now that you know me like as a person yeah. like it's sometimes it's a blessing that team and sometimes it's a curse yeah. and that's something that just suited it so well like everything that's happening because sometimes you know we all felt like you know, everything's going perfect we're gonna win it all and sometimes you know when everything was not going well and yeah i was not happy or like i was just you know we're, we're all doing just bad mm -hmm. stuff like it was just going down right yeah and i'm not saying that you know now if nothing if it's gonna go down you know if we're gonna do worse then we're gonna go all down i do not believe so but because of how much i learned from the experience especially like yeah. this split like the spring split the thing team building activities do really well is that when you're in a period where things are going bad versus in a period where things are going up you don't feel as much that things are going horrible if the team building activities etc stay consistent not in terms of results but if the schedule stays consistent a good thing about having a schedule is it can anchor the team somewhat in a specific kind of mindset it's when you start changing up that structure that everyone genuinely starts to think, oh, we're actually in a really bad situation, you know? It's better to just keep things going, and then when you get that win, everybody trusts everything you've been doing up to that point, and it makes it easier to start the going bad again, because people won't assume when things go bad and you continue doing the same way that it's really doomed right that's the really good thing about team building stuff and it doesn't sound like they had that on koi but it does sound like they had that on Fnatic. so yeah i'm just working right, uh, right now around all of the things that that's why professional sports teams are so rigid with those types of things even shite yeah i mean this is only professional sports figured out since like the 1960s 1970s but it's something that esports teams are struggling with because it's very easy to end up with that one player who just thinks that team building stuff's a complete waste of time and you spend so much time on that that it's easy to think it's not worth to force that guy to do this shit but it is worth to force that guy to do this shit because otherwise you're going to be an extremely streaky team you know i learned because I can tell you, like, last time I talked to my psychologist, like, the psychologist I got to work with, uh, like, I was speaking for, like, an hour and a half, and I still didn't say, like, half of the things I had, like, from my actual, like, thoughts about, like, yeah. what could be done there, so, yeah, there's, I'm still processing a lot, and I can see that I'm still, like, not uh, 100 myself, I'll say, with, like, how I want things to be, you know, like, I'm still processing so much, I'm still, I'm still just trying to work it out, you know, so I yeah. actually can be, I can make use of all the things I learned, mm -hmm. so I can actually become just way better than I was. It's a process. That's, that's, that's hard. Yeah. And for most people, it's, like, a lifelong journey, you know? I, I, this is what I ever tell people. A friend of mine told me this when I was, like, 25, and I've been telling people ever since. It's like when you're 21, you're like, I got the world figured out. Yep. 19 year old me was an idiot. You're 23, you're like, 21 year old me was an idiot. I got the world figured out. And I've been telling myself that every two years until I'm 30. I'm like, now I just say, I have no idea what's going on. Yeah. At any given point, I figure some stuff out, I unlearn it, I relearn it. I have no idea what's happening. Yeah. It's just yeah. like, I, 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 what I've said on stream 500 times, so I'm sorry if you're hearing this again. Um, but what I always say with regards to that sort of thing is if I don't feel like I'm a different person to the person I was two years ago, I think I've failed. You know? Like, if I'm not already cringing at the me from two years ago, I've fucking failed. So the guy I was ten years ago, I think, was fucking stupid, yeah. But I legit think, if I'm the same person I was two years ago, it's fucking over. Like, I've stunted my development. For sure I've stunted my development. There have to be things I'm assuming now, or that I don't know now, even if I know I don't know it, that I will feel like an idiot for not having known in two years time there has to be and if i'm not constantly reinventing myself that way i've definitely failed as a person that's how i think right um so i agree i go back 10 years 20 year old me is fucking stupid eight years ago when i joined h2k 
21, 22 year old me is fucking stupid. All that's true. Fucking 24 year old me on Shulk is a moron, right? But he's a moron who could still potentially beat Coma to be the youngest head coach ever to win Worlds. But he didn't. Um, but like... I think you should have that as a continuous process. It shouldn't go into stages of like, you think you know everything, but you should expect, you should expect to find out you don't know anything in two years time, right? Within a two year period, I should say. Um, you should expect that at every stage, but you should still act in supreme confidence. You have to act in supreme confidence because if you don't act in supreme confidence, you won't get course corrected. You won't get course corrected. So you still have to do that. The time I should say that you don't act in supreme confidence is when your action will affect someone other than you. It's not worth taking that risk for someone else, but it can be worth taking that risk just for you. But it's not worth doing that for someone else. If you're going to do it for someone else, make fucking sure you know what you're doing, and you'll probably learn that you don't know what you're doing off of that, right? That's my approach, at least. I'm the executive. You're like, like, I'm you're like now, you're like now 27 me. I've got to figure it out. It's all up here. You're going to be 20 out of my world works. Like, oh my God, like, 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 yeah, but Suzy Doozy, that's literally how caps learn the game, so. What the hell's going on here? I was so cringe. Why did I act like that? Why did I treat people? Why did I, oh, yeah, so, yeah, no, it's, no, dude, but I'm, it's really cool that you um, are taking those steps because I think in competition, it's so easy to let everything be about the competition yeah. and to not be better because you as an individual want to be better, but to be better as a competitor. And I think min-maxing your own mental health like that can take people down weird paths. Um, and so it's cool that you're also like, you're you're still in the process and you're working on it not just for the team or the game or for your career but for yourself and i think that's yeah that's super cool sounds, sounds like you're unlocking you as a person more than just you as a player in yeah your name like Trimby. you know now it's like adrian's coming out a bit and you're being more of like personality yeah. to yourself which i think it attributes to becoming a better player as well because once you're better uh, yeah. understanding who you are and what you want and as much as much you might ever be able to figure that out properly you can like impact people around you uh, on your team a bit better. Yeah, and even if you're just figuring out what you don't like or don't need you yeah. know it's like it's all a process and that's any step you take is going to be eventually will be positive if you keep working at it i feel like um yeah that's it i mean it's focusing in on uh, one last little thing on Koi. Do, you, do you feel like um is there anything you can say about like what the problems were? Because obviously we're still seeing Koi struggle, and it's different yeah. different players. And, I, and again, the goal here is to drag people, but just to kind of understand more of what might be going on with Koi right now. It's like, can you talk at all about some of the changes that you wanted to see weren't there? Was it struggles in communication? Was it struggles in conflict resolution? Like, what was what was what were some of the problems generally? Again, I don't want you to talk about anything that you felt like were going on with Koi that that you weren't able to solve while you were there. I think for me, it was like just characteristics. Like, I, I love all of those. You know, they're like my friends right now, like cute friends, like people that I spent so long time with, and some of them I still like, you know, talk daily even. Yeah. You know, like I get to. And yeah, it's like the thing was like, yeah, as I said, it's like really characteristic based thing because I'm the type of guy that loves to. I like to talk, not always, because you know I have my times when yeah. I just don't want to be talked <laughs> to. But most of the times I want to talk for things. On to like, like just try to you know make things done, and not everyone is like this. You know, there's like such a different view, so so different. Okay, read between the lines. Most of the time, I just want to talk and get things done. He's an asshole. Okay, I just want to be clear. You're not choosing between getting things done, right, and being nice. Typically, being nice is a great way to get things done when what you need done requires other people. If, get, if what you need done requires another human being to do something, being an arsehole actually makes it way harder to get things done, Trimby. And that might be why you got kicked. Just thought processes and I didn't really, this year I didn't really get to understand all of the thought processes in the mm -hmm. team and that was something that was like hard for me to just get through. How are you going to get things done if you don't understand the thought processes on your team? Like, how are you going to get things done if you don't understand the thought processes on your team? That's the, that's the process you need to get into and change. If I didn't understand, like, I had to start assuming things, and that's something yeah. I don't like because when I start assuming what other things, then I become very selfish, I'll say. That's like my feeling, sure. and that's something that I felt like was happening, you know, with like just everyone. And it's not something that is easy, you know, to work yeah. around. And I think a lot of pro players and teams struggle with that. Yeah, it's good that he acknowledges he needs to work around that, right? But like, the assessment of why he probably got booted is, I mean, like, I can't, like, honestly, he had to be an arsehole to get booted for Advian, right? Well, again, love Advian, but like, come on. Like, by in game stuff, there's no way. Yeah, and I, and I can say from our experience, we're talking to the teams they do, and that's like one of the big things that, is, that kills team environments is when you can't speak openly in your position where, you know. yeah, you assume that this guy isn't coming, you know, isn't doing this because he's lazy or whatever, when in reality he's got another reason or he's more focused on another thing, not to put words yeah. in your mouth. Those are some examples that we've heard. You know, it's just when a guy dies 10 times in a game and he doesn't want to talk about it, you know, you assume he's just griefing, you know, rather than like talking about, oh, he has some misconception about how the early game is played and he keeps making the same mistake. You know, it's that's tricky. Like, that's a super tough thing to, to solve. Do you think those assumptions just got worse over time and that's what it just came to? Like, you know? I think it was, yeah, it was not easy to like work around it or like all the time. And I think now, I mean, I would say that now they're doing better. That, mm -hmm. I mean, regardless of the like results, it's two weeks, you know, it's like yeah, the best yeah, of ones, they were actually, they were actually like being in like good position, like most of their games, they were just, mm -hmm. you know, going out and like it happens. And I feel like for them, I think it's better right now how it is. Like trade, I feel like the trade that happened is like good for both. Wait, there's a persona of him being a really nice type of guy? Where did that get developed? Okay, I always figured it was kind of like a known thing. This guy's a bit of a dick, but it's not. Really? That's so funny. That's so funny, actually. I, I know. Yeah, like how things are. He's viewed as a soft. 
Nah. Maybe I could him. I mean, I don't know, because I fancy, like, uh, to talk a bit more about the trade. Like, That's quite funny. I, at the end of the day, I wanted to stay, like, yeah, but it was not up to me sure. whether I stay or not. It was more up to the decision of what team actually needs the most. Well, I guess he's caring. It's just what he cares about. That's like... <laughs> I kind of appreciate that, you know, they also did think and say, you know, that it's good to change because they saw me actually, like, they saw me actually struggling a lot, you know, and yeah. they felt like, yeah, maybe it's good for him to also make like a change of environment, just change. Because I was asking myself if it's if it's a me problem, if it's an yeah. environment problem, or it's just like, combi like combining everything together. Yeah. And that was something that was like a big struggle on my, well, on my head. And like, I had like Okay, pro tip, Funui. If you're very good at optics, you can get away with anything. So if you're very good with optics, you probably needed to get away with something at some point. Probably a lot. The guys who aren't good at optics, they never had to be good at optics, you know? They never had to be good at optics. Talking to the processes guy, and it sounds yeah. like processes might be some of what Koi needed, and we'll hope that that can help him in the week to come. But I'm sorry to hear that you weren't, um, you know, there's a situation where you didn't want to go. Uh, I'm really glad that you ended up on a team that's doing well. Yeah. I guess the question for me now is like, do you, you talked about, you went fanatic. Why would you have to be good at giving the impression that no, you're nice? It's really hard to You guys yeah. are doing great, so there's some part of conflict that we haven't seen yet. You probably haven't seen it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but do you, do you feel like you're getting more of what you need as a player at fanatic right now? Like, are you getting more support? Are people giving back the energy that you're putting in, or maybe recognizing when you don't have the energy? Uh, like, what, how do you feel about the environment experience? I mean, yeah, like talking, actually, something that really, really helped me is mm -hmm. just moving. Just moving away to a different side of Berlin that I'm gonna talk about because it's like such a big thing. <laughs> yeah, you to Berlin, yes, like exactly. Time. I moved from the west to east of yeah. Berlin, and for me, it's a day and night experience, like pretty yeah. much. Because I feel like a human now again. I feel like you know, I live in because I didn't like Berlin so much. Yeah. I, I was not a fan of Berlin, but it's because I didn't know how to travel. Based. This means he's sane. Any sane person doesn't like Berlin. You use the communication well, like uh, like just not a single sane human being says the words. Wow, I really like Berlin. For example, the last person who told me they actually really like Berlin and I'm trolling was Malaclipse. So... The public transport, okay. transport yeah, and, and overall, yeah, I felt like everything is so far, I couldn't do anything, and now I'm here, like, like in the East, and yeah, I feel like I'm living my life, you know, even though I'm still, like, doing all the things I do, like, I'm, yeah. most of the time I'm spending playing games, like, uh, playing League of Legends, you know, like, either training or playing solo queue, and all the, also thinking, but now I have, like, I feel like I have so many options, you know, around me, yeah. to do stuff, and also my office feels so much better, because I actually feel like I live in a, I live in an area that it's, like, lively, you know, there are actually people out there doing stuff, yeah. like, West and East, it's a bit weird in Berlin, it feels like. If the Allies salted the earth Berlin was on so nothing could grow there again, history would look kindly on them. Very different, yeah, yeah. so for those who don't know West of Berlin, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but it was basically the half of the city was like bombed to shit, so it's all like new yeah. buildings, very modern architecture, very like clear, deliberate street planning, whereas East Berlin is a lot of stuff that remains, so the streets, it's a lot closer, it's a lot tighter, yeah. um, it's a lot dirtier, and I love that, it's a lot clumpier, like in Friedrichstein, like Cologne, etc. Schallenberg feels like a very clean, almost um, like Nordic city is what I would compare it to, like something like Copenhagen, where Friedrichstein is much, uh, much grittier. Yeah. It's also uh, a lot more like, a, what's the word, uh, not hospitality, like more restaurants, and like... It's denser, cafes. and so I think it definitely feels that way, because there's still a ton of good food in it just feels course, like it's more yeah. spread out, whereas yeah. like in Friedrichstein, it's very much like where a lot of clubs are, everything feels super close, and the area where you guys are, where I used to live in Mark, kind of lives now, is like, I mean, fantastic. There's so much with them walking. The way I call it is like Charlottenburg, like the way I work, like I was living in, was the place when you went out, like you go out. We lived in Charlottenburg as well, by the way, guys. You work, you just work there, you know, you're like on the street, you either work, go to shop and buy something, go back to apartment, and here, when I leave my apartment, I feel like I see people who are leaving, you know, they're actually leaving the day on, like, on the street doing anything, you know, like going to, like there's so many places, you know, like those tables that people are just sitting, chilling, Whatever they feel like, and they're just hanging around, you know. And I didn't see it. Okay, but Charlottenburg, there are actually some really nice bars in Charlottenburg. Um, okay, there's a real, there's one really nice whiskey bar in Charlottenburg. There's one really good bar in Berlin, and it's the only objectively really good bar in total. But there was a really good whiskey place in Charlottenburg that was British themed because it was the British section um, during the Cold War, um, and that was a really nice place to just go have whiskey. Otherwise, basically everyone's experience of Charlottenburg is the same little strip where there's like the McDonald's and the TK Maxx. And if you've ever been in Berlin, you know the place I'm talking about, right? Like so much there. And the the feels, it's cleaner, but also feels more sterile. Exactly. Feel what like, does people... being good at optics mean? Being um, articulate mostly. It's mostly about being articulate. Um, and playing to the crowd. Or, you know, out there living the best life and having a good time. I know what you mean. I, I, yeah. But coming back... Oh, yeah, go, go, go. oh no, I was just gonna say, I think you're bringing it back there as well, but like, this year just sounds like a lot of eye-opening personal growth in the right direction, which is very yeah. important, because all the struggles that you may have had in Koi and like, not finding the maybe right communication or being told the things that you were told towards the end of it, and then being able to take that and apply it to yourself, and yourself as a player going to Fnatic, I feel like everything's kind of moving in the right direction for you, and you're straying away from this yeah. struggles and this hole you're kind of stuck in in yeah. spring and winter. Oh, shit. You feel like you got kind of uh, hit the ground running, so to speak, with Fnatic, because not only have you learned all these lessons, but you now, you don't have to worry about the baggage or the things that weren't said on Koi, because you get to start with a team that oh, doesn't really know you as much as a player, yeah. that you get to, you get to okay, start with one one up, guys. I'm sorry. That way when you joined, you're like, oh, snap, like, new team, I get exactly who I want to be from the start, rather than having to, like, figure it out along the way. I know you said you're still learning, but, like, more of the person you want to be. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, it's this so, solve doesn't it's count. so eye-opening, you know, you go into a new team, you're just a, you're a newbie, right, like, over there, like, when it comes to, like, structure-wise and everything, like, you don't know how team works, you don't know, you don't know who's, who's like, yeah, who's doing how, like, how are their characteristics and stuff. You have to start, like, I wouldn't say try-harding again, but you have to, like, get into, like, the yeah. zone of the team, you have to, you have to earn your, like, rights, kind of, like, I mean, I earn your rights, like, yeah, I, yeah. I felt very welcome. You to prove yourself. Yeah, like, kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. this way is better. And,
like yeah. I'm vibing and stuff. It's still like a process, but, uh, but uh, I've been enjoying it a lot because like, Whippo is my go-to for that. Yes. Like, meeting new people, getting to know new people, just yeah. trying to figure it out. Who... Whenever people ask me if I think a player's smart, I always say, smart or articulate. Who's doing how and how are how are you know the feelings and characteristics yeah. of specific people? I always like liked it and I was like, yeah, I was always happy to like try my best, you know, to like get to open someone so I can be also open with him and try to get like a good relationship like around it. And that's something that motivates me a lot right now. Yeah. And yeah, as well, like as you said, like all of the bag like the baggage that I left, like all of the lessons and like stuff mm -hmm. I need to like still like get to understand and learn now. Yeah. Like I'm trying to make use of it in Fnatic and I yeah. feel like they need to abandon this line of inquiry because he's basically repeated a very similar thing to what he said from like here onwards, right? So I think they need to, like, abandon this line of inquiry now. You're not going to get any more specifics from him. I actually think they got a lot from this, so it was good. Yeah, but... there's a lot to process, and I've been, I felt like I've been doing well. Like, I can see improvements in myself. I can see that the things that I was struggling, for example, even this year, that I've been doing There's better. nothing to do in Berlin. There's just... It's not a city. There's nothing to do in Berlin. There's nothing to do. And that's something that, yeah, I'm really happy about. Dude, it's awesome. Like, I just love the amount of positivity you're experiencing, because, like, this could have been a very different podcast if you were on TV. It's bad for, in no particular order, food... Cinema, bars, unless you're into some really specific hardcore shit, nightlife, and I mean hardcore shit, like lock-ins and stuff. Um, unless you're into very specific kinds of music, it's not actually very good for music. Um, even the coffee in Berlin is actually not superior to some other places. Like, there are better coffee places in America than in Berlin. Struggling or team environment that wasn't working for you. Because that's, that's tough. Like, you got you went from one team that's a ton of history and pedigree in Europe and Rose Slash Koi to another, and, and, and yeah. it's a team that's not performing. So I'm really happy that this worked out. It's impossible to be bored in New York. As well as it has. Talking a little bit more about in-game. Um, I know some of this was in PGL in interviews already, but I want to kind of recap some of it for, for the audience who hasn't heard yet. Um, you're super vocal. I was watching Kato yeah. watch your voice comms yesterday. You're so, you're, you're I mean, so communicative. Rath worked some of your praises in some of those early interviews where he's like, it's great. I yeah, when it comes to team fights, Trimby literally doesn't stop talking, and it felt like... Didn't feel like... From what I listened, all of the information he was giving was good. Like, all the information he was giving in team fights was just fucking good, right? His comms in team fights were so fucking good. I just worry about hitting my camps good and playing well in the early end because Trimby is talking and communicating all the time. Um, do you see yourself like differently than how you were when you first started? Have you always been this vocal? I know Odo wanted to talk about it yeah, way back in the day. It's like I mean, it's it's kind of like this. Like I still think yeah, the, the way you know to talk about it, I still feel it too. Or like sometimes I think I mean I talk a lot, but I don't want to do this like all the time. You know I don't. Right now I think I'm just so excited that I actually got to. I still have this feeling. Yeah, actually I got to find a team. You know and I actually get to play the summer because I had a feeling I might not. You know this year, so I'm just happy to play. You know I'm yeah. ready to compete and that's why maybe I'm like. Okay, so if he burns out from the comms, it's going to be really bad. If the team gets used to a system where Trimby just takes over comms, then it's gonna get really bad really fast, you know? Yeah, like so fired up. Yeah, fired up like completely. Because I don't want, like I don't want to shout this much. Like normally, I try to be quite calm, and because yeah. that's something that I learned from like my first year in Rogue. Like when I was like, uh, you call it chattering comms. Like when you, when my comms were so loud, and I was doing like I was saying so you much useless stuff. Yeah. yeah. And nowadays, I still think there are times you know not where I say stuff that is not really that useful. But uh, I try to like mix it up. You know, like like I feel so many emotions while playing that I'm, I was telling my everything. Like I, I can't stop it. You know, sometimes I might say the biggest bullshit you've ever heard. <laughs> uh, I can't stop it. Yeah, I that. In, in a fight, you're just like, no, 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 yeah. just keep going. I don't know. Like you know, and it all started with the Alino Flesh incident. You know, when like yeah. Alistar had, like, oh, yeah. when I was calling Alino Flesh and Alistar Insta Flesh on my AD at the same moment. Oh. Uh, from there, I kind of like started to like figure out how to make best comms. Like how yeah. to just make good comms. And I still have a lot to work, I think, because this year, this year I didn't really work too much around it because there was other issues. So right now I have like more time and more, yeah, just more options to figure it out was the best. And yeah, Razork has been doing a really good job because, I mean, you can hear me most of the time because that's like the highlight comes, yeah. but I think Razork is... Oh, is he going to confirm it? Doing a really good job. I think we, we heard it as well. Um, and again, we're limited. I think we could probably listen to the whole game voice comms, we haven't searched it out, so yeah. we're mostly watching. Yeah, so Trimby takes over in team fights. Like, the kind of comms Trimby's doing in team fights wouldn't actually translate well for map comms. And my understanding's always been that Razor calls map comms generally, and Humanoid sets the strategy, right? So you know, it would be like, we take this, and then Razork will do all the micromanaging, you know? Highlights. Um, but we hear him a lot more yeah. in the late game, because you guys work really well together from what we've heard in the late game, in terms of calling fights especially. I think also Humanoid is doing an amazing job. When he, yeah, when he... there you go. They've specified fights now. He's in the zone, and he like you know, he, he, the game is like he's kind of you know, and he sees the the angle. It's like so easy to play. Like it's just he just calls out everything that's possible on the macro. He's very good when it comes to macro, so mm. it's just so easy to work. And obviously, Oscar, like he has his highlights, and he. Yeah. Oh, I really like how I can work with, around it because even the first game that we played, right when we did that, Cassante Q into trash cook, it was simple. Like I, you know, he said something, and I'm already like, it's so nice because I don't need to ask him for that. He said stuff, I'm just picking it up. I'm gonna do this, you know. Like yeah. if, you're, if you're confident about it, I'm gonna do this. And that's like that was so nice because it was never planned. We never did it before. It's just like a random thing. And obviously, no, I think no, I've been doing good. I think he has a bit different style of like macro because yeah. he has this Korean macro still a bit, and it's not easy for us to work around it because it's a, it's a bit different how he yeah. does, you know, the game. So, but I still think he's doing a really good job. Yeah. And nowadays as well. 
I feel like it's my first time ever in my career when I feel like I have to take care of the like lane part because mm -hmm. every time I, like every every team I've been to I always felt like ADK is the one that's supposed to you know like yeah. call out if he wants to do with the waves and we're still trying to make sure you know that me and Noah are on the same page mm -hmm. but obviously due to like language barrier and the way yeah. sometimes like Noah is like really focused and then he has to speak in English how he wants things to be I have to think about about it for him you know and that's like a big thing because that's really important if I'm not gonna call something out that's important for bot lane nowadays in this meta the game, yeah. the game might yeah. be just yeah. over yeah. 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 so that's like like that's something that you know it's new for me because I never was I always would take care of myself you know like how to support my team and my ADK yeah. so I can work around but now I also need to kind of think of like how we actually want to make sure the, the game from laning is also good for the whole yeah. team and us. I a similar thing in Excel when you have like one Korean player on your team, oftentimes when you have two, it's easier because they can like talk exactly. to each other. When you have one and you spend so much time with them, like I spend so much time with like, people who spend a lot of time with you, know, not just like in the game but outside the game. Every time they're in like reviews or they're trying to say something in game, you kind of already pick up on what they're trying to say when other players don't yes. because you know them so well. Do you have that with Noah already? Uh, I have it, but I think it's more because of how I tried to work with Marang. Like this one and a half year with Marang helped me so much not working with Noah because sometimes he says, like, I mean, I would say like the stupidest words possible to like uh, to explain like a yeah, simple thing because exactly. he just doesn't remember the, the, the yeah, yeah, it's, hard, it's yeah. normal, right? And I kind of pick it up already, you know, like I pick up what he wants to say and I'm trying to explain my team what he actually means by that because yeah. I already understand this kind of thought process behind how he wants how he tries to find the words. Mm. But it's a bit different too because Marang is not so he's not he's not so talkative, I'd say. Well, Noah, he likes to talk so but much. It's characteristic. Your, <laughs> your, how would I mean, it's really obvious Mao Wang is, like, not... Like, like, what would Mao Wang say? Like, what would he say? His... His... His, his game... His game has no thought process behind it. What would he be communicating to people? You know? Your voice comes to you, are like, yeah, we're gonna go coffee. It's like, okay, I drink water. Yeah. Like, cool, man. Like, yeah, I know you want to say that. Yeah. Yeah. We want to waste a little bit of time. Okay, sure. Yeah. Like, I'm really fine. Like, you can see his camera as well. He was just like, comes, okay, I drink water. And he's just like that. And Trimby's just laughing. Like, <laughs> his best level one mid, W star, airy Ivan. It's really fun. He's so lovely. That's like, and you gotta start somewhere too. And that's you know better to be I, in my experience from what I've seen at least uh, too vocal than not vocal enough because I think it's way it's easier to get people to talk less. It's way harder to get people to talk more. I that's feel like from what I've seen. Yeah. Um, it's very true. Do you see yourself as a leader now in terms of like how you're directing mm -hmm. the team in game? I know it's like a, the I idea know. of a shot caller yeah, is very yeah. historic, prehistoric, yeah. even back to like season three high. Yeah. Um, not that he wasn't that, just it's not really like everyone's communicating. I know, but it, it feels to me like you're taking. You were always trying to put a lot of, take a lot of responsibility and give a lot out. But now you're you're such a veteran player, and we see the immediate contrast of you coming into Fnatic. And I know it's not just you. I know it's a team wide effort. But that's you. You know where the easiest points for people to grasp. But it really to me feels like you're a guy who's kind of often directing the flow of the game, communicating, bringing people in. Do you see yourself as, as like a leader of the team or? Uh, I mean, I still think the leader thing is kind of fake and a cup, pretty much. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, to me, it's just a cup because uh, everyone can pick up the game, everyone can step up and just make yeah. the game easier. But for me, I think I just learned how to enable everyone, how to make sure that, like, that they can facilitate well in the game. Yeah. And that's just something I'm trying to like work around because I think it's like the easiest way for me to make sure everyone is involved in the game. And yeah, sometimes I might ask too many questions, sometimes I might ask stupid <laughs> questions in the game. But yeah, people then start, you know, thinking about what to do, and that just helps the whole team. Then why not? And, yeah. and I wouldn't say that I'm the guy who decides all the time. I feel like sure. it's more on humanoid rasgo, I would say, because I always feel like it's more on carries to like say actually what they want. Cause... One sec, I just have to give some feedback to a guy. Yeah, I me mean, as a support, I don't sometimes see, like, I don't always know how much gold they have, I don't see their full but, process. It would also be weird for you to be like, oh, you have three items, I know exactly yeah. how much damage your character does in this contest. Yeah, but it, never played a game exactly. with in my life, you know, like, yeah. it would be weird, it would be odd. But, yeah, I guess I could say, like, I'm a bit of a leader when I, like, I just try to make sure everything yeah. They're really well. trying to force this when they've already acknowledged that, like, he does it in team fights. Like, I don't think Trimby should be in a situation where he might needlessly have to take credit for other people's stuff. Um, but it's really difficult when people are giving you a free window to do it, that, like, you just say it, you know? Like, it's so, it would be so easy to do so. I've seen such bullshit get propagated from this kind of forcing. Oh, like, you know, it's a well-oiled machine. Sure. And, like, that's kind of what I mean. I don't mean, like, shot caller, yeah. like, you're the, the mastermind again. I think that's kind of the old school. Yeah, they have no idea where to move away from the topic. Yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah, it is, um... But just, like, it sounds like... How is he... Emo You've already acknowledged he does it in the fights and Razork's doing it elsewhere. Just don't tempt him, man. Don't tempt him. Leadership qualities at least are really coming out, which I think is, is super cool. I think the, the whole like notion behind like the leadership or, or like the qualities that have been provided to Fnatic from you to make them better is like if you look back a few months ago, Fnatic was in such a drought for wins. They yeah. were struggling so much. The fan base was leaving their up in arms. Fnatic just like was crashing. Yeah. And now learning about you having these personal struggles and struggling in court, you sound like things are going slowly downhill as well, or maybe over time it's just getting worse and worse. And you take the two together and you put it into like a recipe, and all of a sudden like Fnatic's just breathing so much. It's like, 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 it's, it's like the, the fan base is back. Your comms are going crazy. Yeah, but why does that? Why does that mean they now have a leadership figure? They might just have better followers. You know, like they might just have better followers. There's no, there's no through line here. In games like. Everyone's just got so much faith in you guys now. Although you lost the G2, people still, you know, they're like leaving. You know, they're like, you watched the G2 game, things look like they were going well. I mean, some yeah. of the team fights were a bit sketchy. No, they should. I mean, we grifted so much in early, like, you know, the team contest we had, it was so. Like, if we play execution like we always do, I think we would actually stomp them, no joke, yeah. because of how actually well we played early minutes. But then we grifted everything that yeah, early, you, you got bottom mid flash, then you, you're losing the pencil. Like, yeah. right, given that they believe this, I, I would bet on a theoretical G2v Fnatic best of five, all in on G2.
and there everything went down so everything yeah. went down so, and you might think it's like a small thing but it's really it just it's so hard like really like, all, <laughs> like from that onwards like it's so hard to play when you have like good plan in mind and then you cannot do anything yeah. and obviously then it started by me dying to like a level six level that you just got like that's shit should never happen you know like yeah. stuff yeah. like this and yeah from there i mean we died so like two easy two big team fights we lost then the game is so hard you know like you're trying like i was trying my best to figure out how to win it but from there like it was it just looked like a stomp because there's literally nothing you can do with the team with the chance we had and stuff and yeah, yeah it's sad that it was against people like this but you know well maybe now they think that they're not look passive which is cool yeah, yeah that's nice. and also, like, again if you're gonna drop a game even if it's in a lackluster fashion like i always think that the best team to drop games against are the better teams in the league at least from a public perception standpoint because you can lose a game to g2 or mad lines yeah, so sure. bad okay. i mean yeah. i don't mind losing like i could, I could lose the game to like, anyone if you know if i will learn a lot like i think we learned a lot out of that yeah. game and that the one good thing is that i feel like i learned so much from the wins too i feel like we as a team we don't really we're not going like ego you know oh, man we're five one we don't need to like think about much we're so far ahead we're learning so much nowadays you, like this momentum all sounds like fantastic right i think a lot of people like buying into that whole idea but there's still like a long road to go right you guys like team has really low championship points to make the world is already quite difficult you need to be really high up standings you basically like i don't know like i think this is like i don't want to like i don't know how many of you guys really like Euphoria? Because, like, I'm, I'm wondering what the appeal is then. Because a lot of this is very, very general, repeated, and somewhot forced stuff. Because I'm sat here thinking, like, what, why would I watch this instead of watching a VOD, you know? Or watching, like, a coaching video, you know? Something game-related rather than opinion-related, you know? Base, base elitist United lover. I miss Deficio, man. I miss him. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell him I miss him. Yeah, it's, it's you need to basically be top three. Do you yeah. think like your struggles in Korea in the last two or three years, just playing LEC, do you, do you have a good idea of how you want to keep the momentum going? Because eventually, like, I miss so, you. Awesome. But obviously, there's either there a crash it or there's just a plateau. Yeah. Do you think that there's ways to figure it out? Maybe it's gonna be really random for him to say. And like manage it. it sounds like I'm saying the coach here, but you know, yeah. the idea of like making sort of something you think about, yeah, I guess it's a yeah, for sure. Because I think, I mean, even before I could see Fnatic was so momentum based, you know, sometimes they had like weeks when I thought they were actually good, you know, yep. and then they would go downhill like right immediately, right before yep. winter and spring fit. So now I feel like the most important thing for me is just figuring out the way so everyone actually like enjoys being there, you know, and just yep. regardless if it's going to be good or bad, like I don't really care if we're going to start losing now or not. If, you know, if we manage to pull it through and get, you know, to the to the final season, get to worlds and possibly win everything after, then I really don't mind because that kind of also what happened like before Mamo, like we are getting yep. <laughs> like it was that looking the, 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 the miracle, miracle, the miracle trip to Sweden that yeah. gave you guys like confidence Sweden, baby. And then the first game in Fnatic, everyone was like, yep, this is over, guys, nothing can Like, what do I engage with? They're like, yeah, I, I, I also think they'll make it through to Wells, and also, why would he say anything else, you know? I mean, I felt a bit too. Like after that game, I was like, "Holy, we're actually doing well." That was when we did the first Euphoria. The day after that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It actually was. And yeah, I mean, we didn't do well. I mean, the scrims started being better, you know. But before that, all of the process like it's been up and down. Like, and that's kind of how it can feel. So I don't want to have like, you know, I wouldn't like to have like now like a complete winning streak and then waiting in the finals. You know, I would like to you know struggle a bit if it's possible. If they, you know, the teams will be getting better and better in LEC. Yeah. And I want to like yeah be contested so we can learn from that. And if not, then I'm still hopeful because I feel like we're learning so much anyway. Yeah. If, when we're winning, like after this game against, uh, we, we had a game against Vitality, right? Last yeah. one, we, had, we could have won that game so much faster if we were actually playing better. Like, <laughs> yeah. they were like they were they should have we should have ended so much faster. And that's something that I really like that all the teammates feel like it. We're not like you know just Happy we want. We should have completely like obli obligated them. Like just make, yeah, 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 just make sure. Oh, yeah, I remember this game. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, we should have made sure that they, they cannot like do anything. And, yeah. You know, like it's not easy if our team come through, but for sure we should have done stuff better. And I see that we're you know we see we're working around yeah, it, and we're making sure we we'll do that. Is it meaning like you're losing like after mid fighting had like four kills or something? Like the game should just be. Yeah, yeah like we didn't do the best things. Of course, there are more things we could do. Except like. Yeah, it's just not. There's not much to engage. You know, when you can just get nash faster or like just do stuff around, like macro wise. You know, it's more macro wise. We were very. I don't think we we're doing that good calls. Like after, you know, every wave shouldn't have a meaning and all this stuff. Like, oh, we could do more stuff macro wise. And do as much. And we know, like we know about it, and that's a good thing. Yeah, you said no has like just a quick touch on the macro idea. Now no has like a different idea of macro because it's like a different idea of macro. Are you guys going like leaning into him and being like, no, what? Let's try something like that. I like, wish they leaned into this earlier because that was interesting to me when he when he said that that like Noah has a different way to view the game. All right, different how? You know, that's where I thought the podcast would go, but then we just kind of rehashed things. Uh, I, I think he has good, like a lot of things he says is good, yeah. but sometimes I think he, uh, he kind of vision on some stuff, and I think it's just because he's a rookie still. Like, I mean, not rookie, I mean, he played in the CK like quite a bit of games, like 35, I think, but yeah, it's just, yeah, in KT. Yeah. But I still think, you know, he, like, everyone has a lot to learn because I think both Noah and Oscar are quite new to, like, Mark, yeah, like, KT all of the challenges, no? Macro special in LEC, how it works, and me, Komanoita, and Razor, we kind of already like understand each other in like macro bases. We have maybe a bit different views because of the teams' differences, right? Like, Komanoita was in Mud Lions, Razor was in Misfits, I was in Rogue, so all three of those teams were a bit different in macro, like um, the way they played macro. And I think now we just have to make sure we like, you know, all like, make it yeah. all possible mm -hmm. and try yeah. to think of it together. And regardless of how much time you spent playing, I feel like you're gonna come up with a different idea. Yeah. Sometimes he tunnel visions on certain things, that's basically all we got. Did I, did I like blank on something? I was in Mad Lions, I was in Misfits, I was in Rogue, so all three of those teams were a bit different in macro, like um, the way they played macro, and I think now we just have to make sure we like, you know, all like, make it yeah, all possible yeah. and try to think of it together. And regardless of how much time you spent playing, I feel like... Please push harder on this for specifics, please. You're gonna come in with a different idea yeah. of what macro, macro looks like. No, probably has a different idea, but I think once you add a language barrier, it makes sense to me that it's just gonna take more time to get on the same page. You yeah. know what I mean? If you learn to value something more through your experiences, whatever that is, you know, like, I don't know, you're inspired
to him by default. That's what you should be doing. You know, it's gonna take time. Yeah. If he says, like, no, say which of these teams do you think Noah would most agree with Macro on? And then whichever one he says, be like, oh, that's interesting. What did that team do that you think Noah would specifically agree on? You know? Like that kind of a thing. Uh, to change that and take time to, uh, to adjust that and probably double or triple that time when there's, you know, there's a language barrier. Because like, no matter what someone says to you, uh, you know, you start to untrain and unlearn everything. Because you force him onto a specific and then you 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 get him to relate that specific right you did before just the way yeah. you're thinking and that's always just gonna be open mind open mind that's gonna be a process it's, it's, it's otherwise awful. a broad question will get a broad answer broad questions are really good as icebreakers for the first like 10 minutes or so but like you have to get some more specific after yeah it's just it's something can take time but despite that i mean no it's popping up and that's what's crazy <laughs> like, you guys are like oh we're not always on the same page i'm like it's like it really that's seems like uh yeah he understands what he's doing fights for you yeah, know forward. maybe goes forward he kills people he clicks pretty well forward because he clicks when i saw you guys leaning against the rakan and he like sidestepped the rakan of the one down forward i was like yeah this guy's just a psycho like just even yeah even i was like yeah it's pretty good it's pretty good oh it's good and it's nice because but still like yeah as i said we're still not clicking out together you know we're not making the same clicks together still and there's gonna like it'll take a while and i don't know if we're gonna you know get it for sure or not because it's not easy to as a bot lane to play like the same way you want to play on the same page like right now i think a lot of laning faces are not playing as well as it could and i think we both understand it and even though right now people say we're like top two in the league like i don't know what it says about the league if they say this and yeah, yeah like yeah. We, i can feel that you know yeah, yeah. we're really like there is work to do you know because yeah. like we they may actually be a top two bot lane right now but that is mostly just saying that only mickey x and han sam are a good bot lane geo that's basically what you're saying when you're saying that you know um and I don't think he's delusional about that at all, right? Like, he's he's quite clear, like, maybe we are, but that just says more about every other bot lane. And it does. It truly does. We for sure, we for sure, there will be for sure games that will not do well, and, like, the laning will not be great, but I think nowadays bot lanes, I don't know why, but, like, the level kind of dropped on bot lane with, like, how aggressive you are as a bot lane. I don't feel like people are, um, like, trying to, you know, fight you back when you make a mistake. Mm -hmm. They're kind of just like, yeah, I don't know why he did that, but, you know, I'm not like, when did you notice that drop? I don't, like, this, I mean, I think now when I play with Noah, I noticed that drop, because me and Compu didn't do that well. Because you made three different AD changes. So it was hard to tell. And support change. But I think now it's just how the game is played. I feel like it's so bot, bot centric a lot of times that you just have to like you just have to be on top all the time. And I think nowadays with half of the team struggling, like I feel like like it just gets on every player. You know, it's easy to see when a player just is not himself because the team is just not doing well. And you can see it in laning phase. It's like very simple, like just to see how he clicks, how uh, yeah, what is his mindset? You know, yeah. if he has a mindset, if he has a mindset that he's there to win, you'll see this. You know? And also because no one wants to admit that Kazi is good. <laughs> but if he sees a mindset that. Yeah, I don't even yeah, care. I don't know. I don't know, man. Are they really trading it like is. this? Yeah, and it, it is like this, and it's a bit weird. But I guess maybe I say this because I played like already two, two worlds, right? Mm -hmm. And my practice sometimes like we'll just get you know like yeah, yeah, yeah. every second game it goes hard, <laughs> but you know then we'll we'll actually face back, you know like yeah. and we'll be I'll be so happy, you know. And nowadays like yeah, I think when screens we're doing really well, like laning phase at least. But for sure we have to make sure we're like doing similar stuff in officials. Yeah. And, and I just from watching it does feel like I don't know, but it doesn't feel like everyone has a firm grasp on the meta as well. Say like people don't look confident as confident in this meta a lot of times. And I don't know if that's just a matter of if I'm just feeling like people aren't as aggressive and making plays. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not sure why 100 percent why I feel that way, but it does seem to me like. Despite a lot of tenets of the meta remaining similar, like a lot of the same core things, I know there was a ton of uh, systemic changes yeah. in the game, like the way things, etc. Um, like people are definitely not taking chances that are more reliant on their skill. I just the think there's play. so many mistakes. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I'm overreading into it, but like when I see some dragonfly setups, someone yes, like along with Trimby is a support. But there's always that one guy just doing something different. Like maybe they're on the wrong side of the map it's, when they should yeah, be on the other side. I know it just feels like some basic mistakes. Yeah, and I'm I'm, I'm hoping that with 13 13 as we get to best of three, that the level's gonna kind of shoot up because I don't think it's on. It's not like there are two teams at the bottom. The right? they have no way of knowing if the normal LEC viewer cares about that if they don't try to introduce it at any point. I'm hopeful that that gets better between the best of three and as we get into a new patch and people are kind of forced to rewind again. Because I think the problem with this patch is just similar enough to the last patch that you're not like really like outside of static stuff, really trying too hard to like super duper innovate. Yeah. Um, yeah. But just not similar enough that there's like, that doesn't feel like people have a firm grasp. That makes sense. I don't know. Uh, it does. I think, I mean, the big thing is for sure the format change this year. Yeah. Like, I, I wouldn't put any blame because like, it's so entertaining, I feel like, for sure. like viewers. It's, and hard. it's hard and very stressful, I think, for a lot of teams. Because, for instance, this uh, this patch, right? Uh, like, it felt like most of the teams figured out the meta and then boom, one team picks LeBlanc static and seems like half the teams don't even know about it first yeah. day. It's really stressful because just, then you can lose yeah. like one week, you know, and then it's zero free, and you feel bad, you know, you just feel yeah. so bad. I feel like only that one like team that. didn't pick LeBlanc yeah, static, like, like, just ruining the metaphor. You know, the thing is, like, that one team only got one win. <laughs> yeah. one so <laughs> you say to yourself, if LeBlanc static wasn't better, would they be zero six? No, right? no, no, like, it's, it's, it's crazy, crazy, no? I don't know. I don't know what's going on. But yeah, it is like a thing, right? Also, we have one less uh, screen day because of the yeah. like how the schedule looks like. So it's less practice. Everything is stressful. So probably the screens are not as ideal. It's also double unlucky because in this split, especially, there's already pressure, so much pressure, but there's like ten times the pressure in this split, especially if your team like Fnatic doesn't have any. Yeah, I hate the format. So people made like so. First off, I love the format as a viewer. I've always said this: the format's good as a viewer. The format's shit as a competitor. I'd hate to compete in this format. And people seem surprised that pros are complaining about a format where you have zero growth time. You have absolutely zero growth time over the course of the split. Absolutely none. So a plug and play lineup that may have zero growth potential can very easily just make it to the championship finals. Despite having no growth potential, and your team that might grow really well together never gets the chance to. Vitality last place. Vitality are the only team with one win. Yeah, they're lost. And then we
biggest pass jumps we've ever done in the middle of the split for this format, which is 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, Reddit would hire perks. I'm sorry. Did you not see Reddit when Ocelot um, fired perks? AKA fired his son's favorite uncle? They were like, dude, that guy literally builds you teams so many intangibles, blah, blah, blah. I was like that too, by the way. But Reddit absolutely would have made the same decision Vitality did. Reddit were calling for that kind of a decision. Reddit was saying, this is the guy you build your whole legacy org around. Straight up. You have a very, very wrong remembrance of perks, right? The big perks allegations only really began this year. This year is the first time that the, uh, that the pullback happened, right? Yeah, I mean, foreign, dom, all that lot have major power over the Reddit narrative because most of Reddit is basically just their fans commenting because the loudest people generally congregate there. Yeah, like saw, there's a mirror thing with Dustblade is also getting part, so she doesn't Dustblade. She doesn't foreign up. thought, as far as I know, foreign statement at the time was that keeping caps and benching perks was the better decision. I don't think he ever addressed how fucked the method of getting rid of perks was, which is my problem with it. That's so disgusting. Like, this champ was fine. I don't no, know. Okay. When Lee Sin has a 48% win rate, you know something's wrong. Oh, okay. These are what I call fandom buffs. There's just so much of the League of Legends players that are like thirsty Lee Sin win rate. Deficio responded, now that was an unexpected message. I said, watching Euphoria and it's shit, and my chat is saying it's been shit since you left, and I remembered when times were good. Oh, they're not long, there's a huge synergy issue on that team. Oh, no, 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 yeah. Um, shout out to Adam, by the way, who uh, wasn't able to play. I hope he's doing better. Um, despite that, BS obviously had a rough split. Team Heretics had a really great week one out. Not so great week two, courtesy of the Euphoria buff. That's a meme. XL is the opposite. SXL had a really great week. Let's start by talking about your schedule. Is there any game you're particularly like, focused on? The, should should, the team should be qualifying for Worlds. I wouldn't be putting them as a top two team. But I'd still think of them as a top four team, for sure. Don, if you had to pick one to really hardcore prep for this week, is, uh, it, is there I any mean, particular team you're more worried about? The thing is that uh, we're having a... We're having actually the uh, match of the week versus Heretics. I was slightly shocked when it happened. Like, not to be not to be mean to Heretics, because I mean, obviously they had like a bad second week, that was a really good first week. Yeah. It's just, I, I was, I mean, I was shocked that, you know, but I guess, uh, I guess we're just gonna play against. Just, just go all in, Trimby. Be yourself, fuck it. Why are you comparing us to these giga fucking randoms? Just say it, Trimby. Just fucking say it. These guys are ass. Their scouting's ass. Evi is ass. My ass is fatter. Their ass ain't even good looking. They're just ass. Just say it, Trimby. Let it all out. Let it all out. Why are they comparing these disgusting randoms with literally Fnatic? Just say it, Trimby. Just say it. We know you want to say it. Them, uh, the Yankos have been playing really well, I think, anyway, regardless of their losses. And I think they've been doing better than last split. So that's going to be quite interesting to see how they, like, how we managed to play against them. Yep. But I think other games, I mean, I wouldn't like to drop any if that's possible. But, you know, like, we'll see how it goes. Like, BDS for sure. Like, BDS has to be hungry not to win. Like, after all of those losses they had, because some yeah. of the games were very just sad for them, I'll say. Yeah. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's same for SK. Like, if SK wants to. Watch Fnatic. True. I've cursed it now. Watch Fnatic just get stomped by Heretics. That'll actually be so funny. 
Oh. Uh, yeah, get to play like later playoff thingy, like they, they need to win. Yeah. So Probably be... not for me, but it will be funny regardless. Yeah, we need to be aware, and we need to make sure that we're not blocking the ball, yeah. and yeah, we'll see. Is there a team, so last split, obviously, Mad Lions finished 8th yeah. and won the split. Is there a team that you're looking at in the, in the standings right now where you're like, well, they're probably going to finish 8th, but they're pretty damn good? Uh, pretty damn good? Wait, let me think. Who's your I think, boards, basically? I think, I'm not sure how Australia will do after the big patch change, because I know they're struggling with, this, uh, with the... Patch. They're just yeah. struggling, I heard. And now, like, when I saw the patch changes, I felt like maybe it's going to be good for them with, like, all the things, you know, like... I love him. Okay, he is a genius. He is a genius. Support being a bit better, like, I think it might be an engaged meta, not really an encounter meta anymore, mm. so... Maybe... Oh, for the love of God. Wait, that's half of it. Get get to the big bit, please. Maybe, maybe those will like come back and you know maybe they'll like they're kind of thriving in it, right? Just yep. either fixing the world and the young comes with like a little Alistar, now to lose Yeah, just yeah. come just come mid, try to help out and that might be you know there may be way, but I wouldn't say I don't know like maybe Madlands, you know, maybe Madlands will like be a bit better with like some of the changes, but then Is everyone just missing how broken AP bot lane is? Is everyone just missing how broken AP bot Kobe is the AP bot laner and they have Kobe and they have AD solo laners. Like Oh my, please, is everyone else missing this? Is like, everyone else missing this? 1313 like, is the Australis patch? He know he has a feel, like, this is gamer brain, all right? Pro players have a feeling something could be good, but they can't quite identify what it is. His brain is screaming at him. Of course they'll be good, because Kobe can just whack out the Velkos every game or some shit, you know? And then you can have Yasuo Kled lanes, you know? No one is going to play AP bots. The only 13-13 games you have watched so far in Europe have had AP bots. So yes, you they will. Like some other, like there's some really random changes now that came out. No, they're not doing it until groups. That, I'm not sure who's going to be on top, you know. Think with the I, think we'll be, well. I think we'll be really good in the patch. Yeah. I think that uh, the patch that is happening, it will be good for us. Yeah. I think there's a lot of nice buffs for us. Sure. But yeah, I don't know. Other teams, it's hard for me to imagine. Is there any team uh, that we've seen struggle on stage that you've played against and you think has been really well on scrims that's kind of caught you off guard with like how poor their stage yeah. is? Or what, what team do you think you've experienced? Yeah. 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 Just stay on the standings here for a minute. Because this is, I think we talk about the overall level right now and I expect it to go up. There are some great moments for sure, but there's a lot of games that are chaotic. But I'm curious if there's any team because with so many teams playing fast and loose on stage, it's kind of hard for us to tell who. Oh, man. But they look, yeah. I still think, like the way sometimes they like do stuff in draft, for instance, it's, it's really annoying to play because, you know, boys, they kind of like, play the carries, and yeah. sometimes the carries fit well, the team comp, yeah. and then it's just annoying to play against, right? And they're also, I would say they're better in scrims, like Vitality for sure, than on stage. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like, as you can see, like the way they played macro sometimes, it's not ideal, it's far from ideal, so. Yeah, yeah that's, and that's also what's happening in scrims. Uh... Yeah, when they get lead, they're like doing good, yeah. but they're also a team that on stage, when they get lead, sometimes they just throw it away so easily. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know about them, but outside of it, I think Excel has been doing better than it scrims outside, yeah. for sure. 3-0. Yeah. Do you that's believe not... in the Excel miracle run? I mean, all those right there, so I know it's a miracle run there, for sure. for sure. Hidden coach of the split. We have to start this campaign. We have to win this campaign. It's a winnable campaign. It's a one campaign, okay? I he's just, he's just showing the, there, yeah. like, let's, let's do it. He's showing the tattoo of the of the Maokai's ear, you know, and he's yeah. like, yeah, that's the shocking miracle run now, about to be the Excel, right? Yeah, they, 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 they should be fine. It's Cassante tattoo. I think Excel gets one more win there, basically finding four is easy to, to get in. The only weird thing I think about this one is coming into week three, you have four teams tied in six. You have Vitality, who's like slumping, but should be doing better, and everyone's kind of wondering when they're going to wake up. But also, these teams, like, Stratus Coy, why are we, why do we keep saying they should be doing better? I don't know. No walk that thinks about that thinks about lineup that way should be doing better. <laughs> Two years. <laughs> uh, then the four-way tie, they all kind of play against each other. So it's like, yeah. it's yeah. A, apart from SK, who has like G2 Mathematic or something, or was it Heretics? One of the teams has like a SK really... Has a SK has a Heretics. Yeah, yikes. Uh, Heretics is the one with uh, Mathematic and G2. So <laughs> but they should be all right. Okay, well, Vitality, G2, Astralis. So they're, their destiny's in their own hands. So do we make, is this where we say like, who yeah, thinks they're making? This, this is the content that people, <laughs> people content, right? Vitality have the easiest, the easiest free games out of all of the teams struggling. They have the easiest free games. So it's more doable for them than anyone else. In Fnatic or Trimby, which is crazy to me, but if they're not, then they just want to know who's going to be eliminated. Yeah, so, so they can like hold us accountable. Like, uh, uh, you're, you're, we're, 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 like, like, we're going to jail at this point if we keep saying dumb stuff. Like, bro, we're, even if I stand by our statements from BDS, we hold. Oh, oh. <laughs> after these three two weeks, they're one hit wonders. We <laughs> were wrong in a lot of ways. Yes, I'm not saying that our, our logic came true. I'm just saying there was a logical basis. But no, it's like so get Astro fucked by Hidden, the greatest to ever do it. It's finals like, ha! No, <laughs> no, no, I won't say that. They, that was because our entire basis of analysis was they would be really good on the patch where nothing changed. They could do the exact same thing, <laughs> yeah, and then yeah. they weren't. So yeah. if we... Hidden runs you, Patrick runs you, Odo runs you. I think there are other players on the team. Abby Darge is a nice guy. They're double wrong. Limit was good in Italy. No, yeah, yeah, we were, we're, win the split. We're double wrong. <laughs> we're wrong about why they were good, and then they were bad. And then if we think they're bad now, Peach is a nice name. Oh, we're gonna be wrong about why. The final question is just to sort this out. Sorry, Jimmy. Yes, we do. Just a couple. Oh my shit. Uh, no, they uh, were S tier, man. They were S tier. They were S tier. S is for sucks. <laughs> oh, See you next year. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm not the, BDS players, the BDS players aren't at fault for us ranking them so highly. I feel like no. I'm getting extra flack because we put them so highly. You know why they call them Peach?
because he's ass. So maybe that's our bad. And, yeah. I, and they have had this point split so far, given how good they were at the end of spring. So I just don't want our banter about overrating them to turn into hate for those players because, you know, they've got their own problems. Separate nice. from that. Like, it's overrated. The reason I say this is because BDS is in my bottom two. Like, I think they're out. I think they, they play against you guys. No. They play against Mad Lions. And they play against Vitality. So, like, one win is what you can rely on. You can rely on maybe one win. So if you lose to Vitality, that's it. I think you're done. And I think you guys are mad, which obviously is going to be a bit of a struggle. Is Adam coming back this weekend? I don't know. If Adam's coming back, then I think, yeah, that's a horror. That's tough. And I mean, that's those are kind of like BS split was already hard before Adam had any medical complications. And I don't 100% know what's going on with Adam. Um, Like, I just hope he's better. But that sucks. Like, that's just insult to injury. You know what I mean? So I'll say SK, I feel like it's my safe bet. They have, again, they have Mad and Fnatic, similar to uh, actually BS at Crazy. Yeah. You guys are gatekeeping a lot. You guys, you, you, it's like you and Mad. Okay, I'm not just yeah. a little bit though, because to me it's like, you know, just, just trying to be SK, just trying yeah. to be BS, just trying to get into the topic. That's all you're trying. And it's like, you I mean, with yeah. the steel chair, and it's like, Misty with the steel chair, and it's like, you know, like, <laughs> this, this guy, yeah, this guy, people are not, <laughs> oh absolutely not ready for the gatekeeping yeah. you're about to do for this topic. Um, but yeah, I mean, I feel like at BDS, I mean, Vitality are also on my list. Because Vitality, Vitality, it's actually hard to say who's going to get knocked at 100%. Okay, it's the big one. It's the big one, boys. One of SK gaming or BDS, but I don't have faith in Vitality. So I'm going to say BDS makes it in. Fuck, how do they make it in? No, God, it's so hard to predict. They beat Vitality. Well, they beat yeah, Vitality. Yeah, BDS make it in by beating Vitality and just barely, barely crawling their way in. Okay. Just barely. Like, I don't want to say that I have a ton of confidence. So you're saying Vitality's out and, and SK's out. What do you think for me? I kind of wanted to go with this though. Because, uh, I mean, I don't know about BDS. <laughs> like, they, like, that's the thing. Like, you know, I would like Osakoi to go. Did he but... say what I think he just said? What do you think for me? I kind of wanted to go with this though. Because, uh, I mean, I don't know about BDS. Like, they, like that's the thing. Like, you know, I would like Osakoi to go, but obviously they're not doing that bit, but I have the biggest hope for them for sure. Mm. Out of all the teams, because I mean, all of this. Koi plays Vitality, which if they're going to knock down, makes sense for Koi to win. Oh, I thank you so much for the eight months. They have like those, yeah. G2, very hard. And, and then Astralis. Astralis. But it's like, it's doable. No, this is doable. Like, that's the thing. I mean, all their teams, yeah, they have rougher time for sure. I would say, I mean, it is, I don't know. Like, it's weird. Like, I could say even SK BDS, because there is a chance team Vitality gets, you know, because they play, right? They play, do they play Astralis though? Vitality plays XL, BDS, and Koi. But I mean, XL won three games before they looked. Yeah, XL, Koi, BDS. That is the easiest three. Yeah, really bad. So it's they like, don't have G2 Fnatic in their future. You never know, that's the thing. I would say, I mean, not to be fair, I could just drop, you know, SK and BDS, but I, I would say, like, safest is just SK and Team Vitality, but Damn. I don't know. It's just, yeah. I'm going to say BDS SK. And I'm also going to preface oh. it with saying, if Vitality don't make top 8 this bit, I will, for the remainder of my casting career, never believe in Vitality forever. Holy. Because I believe in them last year, I believe in them at the start oh, of this year, I believe in them in winter and so spring, giving them the benefit of more time. We never believed! We didn't give a shit! Okay, we believe when Self Made was there, if they kept Self Made through summer, but they didn't! So we never believed! Even on a technicality! And I also kind of felt like in summer, you know, they've had a long break from SI. Both in English, both in English. Maybe, it's, maybe it's better, but it's worse. And it's yeah. getting worse. So I'm going to say, if they don't make it now, I'm done. I'm done. Yeah, I hope this Vitality can make it. I hope that their faith, your faith in them will be justified. And that they Actually, can... top two gets a pick with the things, right? That's like, what group what they go to. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. for those like this. I wish they got a draft group. So I hope we can see that change in the future. Because then I feel much more like top one and two really matters. Because you need to make sure a wild group. Yeah. 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 Anyway, well, um, schedule coming out this weekend. Kick things off as we wrap up here. Uh, buff, 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 buff. Fnatic playing BS. Day one. Some mistakes. Two teams are going to die. There's bottom of the standings is so close. I know I'm like this close, but this last week is going to be XL 3 to 0 this week again. In the army, based XL 3 0 believer, hidden is the greatest to ever do it. Saturday, 17.5. Like your guys' last game of the, of the splits, SK Fnatic could decide their entire fate. That's crazy. That's <laughs> awesome. Gatekeeper, steel chair, bam. <laughs> or or in the dramatic WWE twist, you know? Yeah, you never know. You never know. That's the thing. <laughs> Since Vega. Uh, yeah, I mean, the split, yeah, I still would say that, you know, everything can beat anyone, even though it doesn't look like it on yeah. stage. Yeah. That's a really crazy thing. That's such yeah. crazy it's weird. Thing. I feel like been, ever since like, the collapse of old G2 and Fnatic in 2018, 2019, it's just been like. The kings are dead. Everyone just runs around having fun. And G2 like 2021 didn't work. Fnatic never really work. Mad Lions doing good. Yeah, 2020 was also pretty. Yeah, 2020 was also pretty. Yeah, 2020 was also pretty. Everyone's running free. And now it's like. It was more contested in 2020 for sure. Like, probably Mad Lions were both doing the work. Yeah, and now it's like G2 and Fnatic are like, you guys are back up again. Yeah. Everyone's still running free. So, that's really crazy. Why is everyone the same winner? Like, can we all figure out who's going to be? And again, God bless best of three. Imagine there's just four more weeks of best of one after this. Oh my God. Yeah, can you imagine? Yeah, it looks like this left. I can imagine. It's like you taste the good candy. And you're stuck with the bad candy, but you taste the good candy. You know, it's like best of three. I think best of three is where we actually start to see how good teams really are. Right now, it's just don't be the worst. You know, that's like it will be sad. Reminder when these teams go out, like don't buy on a hate train. Be, be kind because they're obviously trying. It will not have worked, and they will now wait for six months to play the Legends. Yeah. It is brutal to be eliminated at this stage, no matter how good or bad your year has been. So hearts out to whoever it's going to be in the end. Regardless, this weekend's kicking off. Cool. I'm hosting day one for some reason. Oh my! It's going to be bad. We will bring you on the desk. Okay, sure. sure. Why not? We'll bring you on. Lock on. Easy. Oh. Cool. I actually wonder if I should like upload that to YouTube or something. It feels like a free upload to just upload reacting to Euphoria.